Welcome to Project Straw. My name is Mike, and today, today we got Skills Router Table and their 10 amp fixed router to check out. Now, you normally get this stuff as a kit. I just happened to get it separately. So, it's pretty much the same thing. This is the router that comes with the kit with this table. Let's get them out of the box. We'll check them out. We're going to run some wood through them. We'll check out all the features and see if they're any good. All right, 10 amp router, six speeds. This isn't really an unboxing because I've already used this thing. This was in the Santa Slave video with the jigsaw and they sent it for that video. All right, so 10 amp. Fixed base router, this is pretty standard stuff, honestly. It's got nice overmolded, rock solid handles, which I like. A little bit, a uh, little bit, I don't know, soft, we'll say. A little soft on the switch. It's got six speeds. One through six. Unlocking it is this lever here. Flip it over. The release button here. Fits in the three positions on the motor, one, two, and three there. And then you have your adjustment with your scale. Eh, it's a little loose, but it works. It turns with the knob, so what do you want? You got a dust port here. On the other side, you got your plate that just fits right on here. If I had it right side up, it just fits right in there. There's your button for your arbor on this side. Pressing our release button. You pull your motor right out of there. There's your three positions for your base to lock into. One, two, three. Base design is pretty simple. This button here just releases the motor from those slots. Nice and simple. Not a whole lot to break on this. It has quick connect levers to lock in your guide rails, so you can put your edge guide on it if you want. And that's it. Easy peasy, man. Simple is good. There's a little arrow right there. And a little arrow right there, so... There you go. Typical ports for your brushes on either side. This thing is powerful, as powerful as I would expect. I have nothing bad to say about this. This combo at the moment runs about $200, which still, if you ask me, falls well within budget. Plastic legs. Looks like our bit storage. Our MDF fence. It's pretty nice. Two sizes on the dust. I like that. Nice smooth finish. Plastic insert. A real aluminum miter slot. Not bad. Metal on the face. It looks promising. So I took out the three bolts there. There they are. They simply fit in these three slots. This is obviously the front here. You want to make sure you have the right one because they're opposite. You want your door to swing away from the front so you can get to the side there easy to get your bits. Included Allen key works for this. I wouldn't get too crazy. You're essentially screwing plastic to a nut cert in MDF, so yeah, I wouldn't go nuts, but hand tighten about half a turn I think is good enough. Same story on this one. All right, so we took our table off, we got our router, and we got to get this base off of here. Three Phillips head screws right there, and we'll get the base off so we can mount our plate to it. Since this is Skills Router, 
and their table, it makes sense that the holes that are marked are going to be for this router. So that hole there has the adjusting rod for height next to it. I assume it's this one. And there you go, all lined up. Plate mounted, ready to go back in the table. You need to locate tab two, which is what it's called in the instructions. That is tab two right there. Make sure this is sticking up. This is the top and the correct way to install that. All right, so notice the cuts here on the one side of that plate. These cuts correspond with these two tabs cut into the MDF, and those cuts go like so, and it just fits under this plate, and then that one's spring-loaded, you just drop it down, and that's it. Semi-secure, so we can flip the table back over and put our screws back in. Before I flip the table over, though, I'll just zip-tie the cord nice and tight, and then we're going to plug it in to the outlet right on the other side there. All right, zip-tie it up. Plugged in there. We're all installed there. Here's our collet nut. Half inch collet is captive in the nut. As standard, you get a quarter inch. It has a piece of wood stuck in it and goes on like so. I don't have a metric wrench this big, but it is 15 16. Or if you live anywhere that isn't the United States, that would be 24 millimeters to you. It is regular right handed thread. The height adjustment from the top is this hole right here. It is four millimeter Allen. Right is up, left is down. So let's start on the front here and walk around like we always do. We got a switch right on the front. This red part pulls out. It is a key that allows you to disable this switch. So if you're gonna put this in a school or you have an orange cat you don't trust, you can lock this thing down. Pop it back on there. And now your switch works again. On the right side, you have this door. It just opens up. It's on a little piece of spring steel and it is not very secure. In fact, it kind of droops. The door is flimsy plastic. Inside here is your storage for your accessories. So Featherboard has a couple little studs that it just hooks on right up here. And then there's a drawer or a shelf. So you can get a few bits in there. Obviously your throat plates fit in there and it just sits in here. It, it does kind of clip in the back. So if there's some weight on it, it'll stay in there, but it is not very secure. This side is exactly the same. A few accessories, Allen key and guide pin will fit in here and then your other feather board. The back side, there's nothing going on except for underneath. Obviously your router and the cover in the back here covers your arbor lock. So you have to go behind the table to press the button and take the cover off to get your arbor to lock so you can change bits. The only other thing to show you is there's a bracket under here on this side right here. It's very stiff. For your miter gauge. Miter gauge just fits in that bracket. You can put it on either side, but this side had, does not have the cord, so this would be the side I would use. It's very hard to put in there. You really got to press it to get it in there. Well, at least it isn't going to fall out. On the back side here on top, we have obviously your fence. Everything you see here, except for this MDF tabletop, is plastic. The legs, all of the fence, everything you see here is plastic. The knobs, the brackets, the fence itself, obviously the guard. So to loosen the fence is the two outside knobs. Loosen those up. You could slide the fence in this cut in the table. Pulling it all the way back allows you to pull it right out of there. There's carriage bolts attached to this and they just fit down into a couple rails, but you can see the amount of plastic you're dealing with here. All plastic. Putting it back on, super simple. Just let those carriage bolts get in there, give it a wiggle and they'll line up and you can just put it right in and tighten it on down.
you get two options for a dust port about 62 millimeters on the outside which is two and a half inches or about 37 millimeters on the inside which is about an inch and a half loosening these four knobs right here allows you to move your fence faces the three finger knobs that are on here make it pretty easy to get leverage and tighten it down i don't mind the knobs they're very plastic but not bad loosening this knob here allows you to adjust this bracket in and out there's a scale right here that's very hard to read and i wouldn't use it has a quarter inch of movement in and out you can move it out tighten it down that allows you to move your outside fence out by a quarter inch so the tabletop here is one inch thick mdf and the laminate surface is very slippery and i like it it has a nice feel it's machine nice they did some nice cuts on here and i'm pretty happy with it overall you have a scale on here for your fence it goes zero to two and a half and then zero this way out one and a quarter over here it's already starting to wear away just from regular handling the print is starting to come off so i don't know how long that scale is going to last on there once you really start abusing this thing and using it it has a three quarter inch miter slot which thank goodness is something i complained about on the cobalt we did and i wasn't impressed at all however Whoever designed this decided it wasn't necessary to countersink the screws, which I find kind of annoying. The miter gauge that comes with it is relief cut on the bottom. No problem at all. But if you're gonna use your own, say maybe the one from my Delta table saw, and it gets stuck on there, even all the way inserted in the table, no bueno. Come on, man. Such simple little things. The first thing I'm going to do is countersink these down in there a little bit. I'll have to check how long they are and see if I have to cut the end. Maybe I'll grind the tip off the screw so it doesn't poke through the bottom. This rail material here is pretty thin, so we'll have to be pretty careful. But this is total nonsense and easy enough to fix, so we'll fix that. ABS plastic, naturally. This is total garbage, but it's a $200 router table, so I'm willing to give it kind of a pass for this one. The Cobalt, I beat it up pretty bad, but you know what? We're like 50 videos in now, and I'm pretty used to looking at these things, so it is, if it looks familiar, exactly the same miter gauge that came with the 15 amp 10 inch table saw we just reviewed, the red one, same thing, shorter bar. That's it. Crooked pointer. Scale that's easy to read, but inverted, which I don't like. Eh, whatever. It fits in the slot. At least it doesn't make a horrible noise like the Cobalt did. You get three throat plates with this. Just plastic. ABS plastic. 11 sixteenths. Marked for the size. One and a quarter. ABS. I'm usually pretty hard on ABS plastic parts on tools. At least they fit in there tight. This is also plastic. And they all fit nice and they fit flat. This is flat with this. Now this, not totally flat with the table. I guess you can't have everything. Little guide stud fits in here. Not the smoothest threading, but it seems to be loosening up. I've had it in and out of there maybe four times. The first time I couldn't get it to thread all the way down by hand, but it's loosening up, so I think it's all right. The threads look okay. Pretty standard budget feather board. This one's got carriage bolts in it because it's for the fence. So you just line the carriage bolts up, get in there. Same knobs as on the back of the fence there. Second feather board has this miter slot plastic rail on the back of it fits right in there easy as can be skill sent this down for free for me to review for you but 
in reality, I had intended on spending my own money on this and buying this to replace the Cobalt that broke in one of my early videos. So I'll put a link at the end for that video if you want to go and check that out. I think they sell 130 to 150 bucks now for the combo, which is a screaming low price, but you get what you pay for. So let's throw a bit in this. We'll do a bunch of bits. We'll do some different kinds of wood. We'll see if this has enough power and we'll see if it's worth 200 bucks. Besides the screws in the miter slot, this is the only other condition issue with this out of the box. The little chip in the bottom of the fence, it's going to affect absolutely nothing, so I'm not worried about it at all. And oddly enough, there is a corresponding smaller one on this side, so I don't know. Manufacturing, how they put it in the box, something, but who cares. Tabletop is 26 inches long by about 15 and 7 eighths. And from the tabletop to the tabletop is 14 and a quarter. Adjusting the bit height, you have two options. Right here is the hole for the router above table adjusting. You're gonna need a four millimeter Allen, and it just goes right in there. Left is down, right is up. Or what I would normally do this is your release latch for your motor, and then you literally just turn this. And you can reach under here, that's down. A little bit harder to turn, that's up. You can just reach under here without bending over, find this, release this, and turn this until you get the height you want. I don't think I'll ever use the above because you have to go find a tool to do it, and with this, um, it's tool free and you're under here anyway you got to reach under here to release this to move this motor up and down so why not just grab for this working alone in your garage all day just about everything becomes entertaining that thing's really cruising so i totally didn't see this coming that is how much space you get underneath there to use a two and a half inch adapter 100% is not going to happen so you can put this on first and then probably not get your fence all the way flat and it's going to be canted or you could figure out how to use the inside one that sucks because I figured I'd be a good guy instead of half assing the vacuum on here I would hook up the real dust collector and you know Tell you guys if the dust collection is good or not, but nope. All right, so I tried to use the dust collector, but instead we're gonna use the old rigid vac. This thing's been rode hard and put away wet so many times I couldn't count. It's probably 15 years old. And the filter for sure, 100% is completely clogged. Perfect. Let's start with something easy and we'll throw a little V groove in this piece of scrap pine. Not too shabby. Let it get away from me a little bit. Let's try a quarter inch rabbit bit in one by one piece of scrap poplar. Put a pretty nice rabbit on the edge of this one. Not too shabby at all. Not half bad. Full of hardwood, no trouble whatsoever. So you be the judge. How does that look to you? I would say not very good. And it's causing me to snipe the end here. So what went wrong? I think most of it is right here. This outfeed fence just isn't secure. It's mounted with that one knob on that piece of plastic back there. And if you're pushing here, at the end, at the end of your run, you're gonna be pressing 
mostly on this fence and this fence is going to give and that's going to cause all kinds of trouble for you. I sniped one of them pretty good coming off the end there. That's pretty, that's a lot of snipe. So yeah, for this, for a uh, for joining operation, I don't recommend this thing at all. I think it did terrible. It's just not secure enough. Also dust collection, not so good. <laughs> it's gotten clogged twice now. I was gonna do a demonstration with this and a bearing. And uh, yeah, I didn't notice this before. This pin, the nuts are in here is crooked. And this pin is very crooked. And it's not the pin, it's the mount. Because if you turn it just a little bit, it's the same. It doesn't matter what position the pin is in itself. Well, it looks like it straightened out a little bit there, but maybe it's just because it's loose. So I must have over tightened this when I was showing you that it was crooked and yeah, came right out of the table. I'll have to go in and find some wood glue or something to put this back in with. There you go. Just needs a little glue or something. Good enough. Here's a slight complaint. There's a lot of holes in the back of this thing. And it just fills up with sawdust from the backside. So what are my first impressions? It's okay. I like the MDF table. It's nice and thick. I like that it has a real miter slot, even though I have to countersink the screws myself to make it work right for me. The nuts are pulled out. Eh. The fence. Where is that fence? The fence with the wobbly side on this plastic extension, eh, it's not good. I would never really use this for joining, but if you're gonna buy it for that, be known that if you loosen this up and extend it out just a little bit, you pull this fence out and tighten it down, it's just damn wiggly. The whole thing's wiggly, really. It's just plastic, and it's not strong enough to hold this straight. So that's an issue, but I would never use it for that. It doesn't really matter to me. This being crooked, not a big fan of that. They drilled it crooked. It's fine for what it is. It's a $200 router table. You're not going to be pounding away at this thing. This is a great starter router table. If you've never used one, this is not a bad place to start and it's got a fairly good entry level. And I would still recommend it over the Cobalt that I also have a video for. You can see that at the end. The Cobalt, not good. Not good at all. So, first impressions, eh, it's fine. I really wanted to love this thing. The storage is kind of a gimmick. These doors are very flimsy. They don't really attach well. You can get a few router bits in it, not much. It's nice there's a place to put some stuff. So it's not floating around in the shop and you can keep it in one spot, but you are not gonna throw this in the back of a van and have it rattling around. I don't think it would last to the end of the day. It's not a super durable piece. 200 bucks, you guys tell me. This is a popular item. I know a lot of people own it. You guys tell me what you think of this. Maybe I went in expecting a little too much from a $200 router combo, but here we are. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked it, hit subscribe, hit like on this one. It helps out the channel more than you would believe. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video.